racing at its finest. The thrill of speed, the roar of engines and the clash of titans. But when the cars are parked and the helmets come off, a drama like no other unfolds. Today, we dive into a storm that's rattling the very core of Formula One. A tale of promise, betrayal and fury unlike anything you've seen before. Nick De Vries, a star on the rise, had the world at his feet, only to have it all stripped away in the blink of an eye. What really happened between him and Red Bull Racing? Why was he sacked so abruptly, leaving fans and fellow racers shocked and outraged? And what's next for De Vries, a talent seemingly left in the cold? The answers are deeper and more complex than you can imagine, and we've got all of them right here. From behind the scenes whispers to exclusive insights, this video will reveal the secrets that many didn't want you to know. So stay with us as we unravel a story that's not just about racing, it's about ambition, politics and the cutthroat world behind the glorious facade of Formula One. It's a story that will make you question everything you thought you knew about the sport. So buckle up and get ready for a ride you won't forget. The truth is about to come out and trust us, it's not what you expect. Before we get into it, please do subscribe to our channel F1 Racing Now and join our growing base of true Formula One fans. Much appreciated. Now, let's dive right in. Hendrik Johannes Nisatius, known as Nick De Vries, has been on the news lately for all the wrong reasons. And without any doubt, he might still be furious with Red Bull Racing right now. Having recorded tremendous success in car racing over the years, De Vries might be going through some blues, considering the humiliation he suffered from his former team lately. He was replaced with Daniel Ricciardo a few weeks before the Hungarian Grand Prix. Let's quickly take you back to the beginning of this season when Alpha Tauri announced that Nick would be getting a seat, replacing Pierre Gasly following his move to Alpine. This announcement generated a lot of excitement for the team. Team principal Franz Tost said at the time, now we are pleased to start a new chapter with Nick, who's very much welcome at Scuderia Alpha Tauri. He is a highly skilled driver, as he won in all the categories he competed in, with many races and championships under his belt. Tost added, his last big success was winning the Formula E World Championship, and this is clear evidence that he is a very competitive driver who deserves a seat in F1. I look forward to seeing him in our car, and I'm confident that with Yuki and Nick, we'll have a strong driver lineup for 2023. But the whole story drastically changed after 10 races. He was sacked. Christian Horner, the team principal of the Red Bull Formula One team, claimed the Dutchman didn't fit with the junior program. And as you can imagine, this must have angered Nick. The news of De Vries sacking was announced on Tuesday, 11th of July in the afternoon. In fact, this decision of the Red Bull officials has received a lot of criticism from Formula One fans and drivers worldwide. Some believe the sack is justified, while others feel they should have given Nick more time. Apparently, the news shocked Nick because he least expected it. However, some top decision makers of the team have been coming out to defend why they had to replace De Vries. In an interview with Italian media, De Vries discussed his unexpected departure from the Red Bull Racing sister team and criticised the decision makers involved. He admitted that the news caught him entirely off guard. He said, in fact, it took me completely by surprise. I wasn't expecting it. De Vries later disclosed a convincing detail about his contract. I signed a multi-year contract and was promised the second Red Bull seat in 2025. As we said earlier, the news of Nick's contract termination has garnered a lot of mixed reactions. Like Lewis Hamilton, even Ace has criticised his sacking, supporting De Vries. In his words, that is how Red Bull do it, he said. I am not surprised to see Daniel back, but I was surprised to see the decision they took over poor Nick. He's such a talented young man and a nice guy, so there will be opportunities for him in the future. When Lewis was asked if the on-site firing was not how F1 worked, Hamilton subtly replied, I would say this is how Red Bull works. On the contrary, Red Bull's motorsport manager, Helmut Marko, has shed light on the reasons behind Nick de Vries' abrupt departure from the Alpha Tauri team. While Daniel Ricciardo's performance played a part in the decision, it was not the primary factor. And we will still talk more about this. The switch from De Vries to Ricciardo happened quickly, taking only hours to finalise. However, the Dutchman had been overwhelmed with crises for some time, struggling to deliver satisfactory results and lagging behind his teammate Yuki Tsunoda. In an interview with De Telegraph, Marco highlighted the rationale behind the team's move. 
Despite only two races remaining before the summer break, Marco felt it was necessary to take action due to the lack of progress. He lamented, what is the point of two more races if there is no improvement? Nick is a nice guy, but he didn't have the speed. Consequently, even without Ricardo's impressive test performance, the change at Alpha Tauri would have been deemed necessary. The Australian driver, alongside Sonoda, is now responsible for revitalising the struggling Scuderia Alpha Tauri. However, Martin Brundle expressed sympathy for the Dutchman, acknowledging his inclusion in the list of Red Bull drivers who have faced adversities in their careers. Brundle himself knew the challenges that De Vries has encountered, as he had to deal with a challenging car and go shoulder to shoulder against a more experienced teammate. Brundle further stated that he noticed some desperation in De Vries driving during recent races. Despite these struggles, Brundle believes De Vries has greater potential and talent than his recent performances. He said, he's not even had half a season in what is quite clearly a difficult car. His teammates a lot more experienced. The former Grand Prix driver added, has it gone well for Nick? No, quite clearly to me, desperation has crept into his driving in recent races, quite a lot of desperation. He explained further, he's got into some skirmishes he shouldn't have been in and it's just been really sad to watch because I think he's better than that. I feel sorry for him that he hasn't had more time and more support. With what we've explained so far, you should have an idea why he was replaced. However, we will throw more light on some parts that we've not really stressed. The first reason for the switch is crashes and damages. If you check the top 10 list for the highest crashes and damages on the grid, Nick De Vries ranks fourth. And it might be rational for Red Bull to capitalise on that. Also, De Vries' performance has not been impressive so far. Apart from damaging his car, he's had a lousy season too and this could make the decision makers feel the need for a swift replacement. The last reason I'll state is Daniel Ricciardo's appealing impression on the team's decision makers. According to Nico Rosberg, the 2016 Formula One world champion, certainly that was the decisive decision to release Nick. If it wasn't for Ricciardo there, Nick would surely have finished the season. Rosberg added, but there was that opportunity to put Daniel back in the car and evaluate him if perhaps they could find the old Daniel once again and not the Daniel they saw at McLaren. And Ricardo had a strong re-debut with Alpha Tauri in Hungary, qualifying and a finishing in P13, the Aussie an innocent factor in a collision at the start of the race, which he felt cost him the chance to score points. Now, you might be wondering what's next for Nick de Vries. According to Guillaume Legoff, the manager of Nick de Vries, there's an interest in the Dutchman across racing series, including Formula One. But de Vries is taking time away from the spotlight to come to terms with his brutal sacking by Red Bull after just 10 rounds of the F1 2023 campaign spent with their junior team Alpha Tauri. In Le Goff's words, There is plenty of interest in Nick and I've had quite a few calls with him in the last week. Many people believe that Red Bull's decision might mark the end of de Vries' career as a full-time F1 driver after struggling to impress in the lacklustre Alpha Tauri 8004, but nobody can tell yet. In addition, Mercedes trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin recently disclosed that he has been in discussion with Nick de Vries. Nick was once a simulator and reserve driver for the Mercedes F1 team whilst also winning the 2020-21 Formula E world title with them. And there you have it, the twisted tale of Nick de Vries and Red Bull Racing. From the heights of promise to the depths of dismissal, we've unravelled the intricate web that led to the dramatic fall of a rising star. You've seen the truth about the politics, the strategies and the personalities that shaped this saga. From the critical decisions made behind closed doors to the public outcry that followed, we've laid bare the reality of a world where dreams can be made and shattered in an instant. But what does this mean for Nick de Vries? Is it the end of his journey or just a challenging bend in the road? Time will tell, but one thing is for certain, the world of Formula One is a complex and unforgiving arena where every move counts and nothing is as simple as it seems. Do you agree with Red Bull's decision or do you believe Nick deserved more time? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of Formula One's most controversial stories, give this video a thumbs up and do remember to subscribe for more behind the scenes insights into the world of racing. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling journey. Until next time, keep your engines revved and your passion for racing alive. This has been F1 Racing Now, your inside track to all things F1. We'll see you in the next video.